called no-till agriculture, which is very successful, uh, the soil would absorb enough carbon dioxide to totally negate anything mankind's doing to put extra carbon dioxide in the air, but you're never going to hear that from the chemical companies and everybody else that wants you to plow stuff in. To tell you the damage the chemical fertilizers have done, 80 years ago, the Rio Grande Valley soils had about 5.5 to 6.5% organic material in them. We grew the best citrus in the country, we grew the best onions in the country, we grew the best uh, spinach in the country. Today, after all these years of piling chemical fertilizers on, the organic material is less than one half of 1%, and the quality, both taste-wise and nutrient-wise, is not nearly as good as it once was. And let me tell you why that happens, then I'll answer your question. Microbes in the soil have to have an energy source in order to live and to do all the important things that your bacteria and fungi and all these other things do, have to have a source of energy. Virtually all of the energy in the world is tied up in the form of what we call high energy carbon bonds. Carbohydrates and other carbon hydrogen and carbon hydrogen and oxygen products form a special type of chemical bond that is extremely high in energy. Ever when you put a log in the fireplace and it burns and it releases all that heat, you're breaking, you're breaking carbon bonds and they're coming out in the form of heat. When you start your car, you're creating all that energy and all that heat. You're breaking carbon bonds that are present in the gasoline. When you burn coal, all these things, that's what you're doing is you're breaking carbon bonds and releasing energy. Your microbes in the soil do the same thing in digesting the organic material that's in the soil. When you put on a chemical fertilizer, you're putting no energy at all on the soil. You're putting on straight chemicals in order to process it the bacteria in the soil have to use up some of the organic material in the soil and every time you do this the soil gets harder, the soil gets tighter, the soil doesn't absorb water as well and your soil gets poorer and poorer. When you fertilize with organic fertilizers you're putting more energy into the soil than you're taking away and the organic content goes up and up and up. We don't need to belabor that point. Just remember use organic fertilizers and things will get better year after year after year if you really feel like you really want to improve the organic content, put some energy source for microbes in there. Fastest release form is sugar. Uh, molasses is a great form of sugar, unless you happen to have connections like Malcolm Beck. He talked to Coca-Cola company that was paying saws tens of thousand dollars a year to let them pour their old Coke syrup and things like that down the drain when it got out of date. He told them that for no charge at all, they could come spray it on his compost piles. <laughs> Such a deal. He was getting thousands of dollars worth of energy. They weren't having to uh, pay to get rid of it. Anyway, sugars are a great source of energy for microbes. Uh, composting things brings microbes in and provides an energy source. As materials, organic materials become further and further and further decomposed, if you've got heat and pressure, you go from, in effect, mulch to compost to uh, what we call humates to what we call coal and gas and oil and things like that. And uh, so anything like this will add energy to the soil and will improve your microbial growth. If you want to get more microbes in the soil, you can do it a couple of different ways. You can incorporate more compost or you can add a wonderful product called compost tea. But you're going to have to come to another seminar and let me spend an hour telling you how to make compost tea. Your question, sir. We were talking a minute ago about uh, tilling the soil. Uh, do they still deep root till in the valley? Uh, the smart ones don't. Some of the others do. Well, I've seen it being done and, and all the soil was blowing away. I was going to say, Mexico's got much better soil as a result of it when the winds are blowing from the north and east. And, uh, Further up in Texas, we've got better soil from all the soil that blew out of the valley while they were plowing. Yeah. Terrible idea. But it's what certain people from certain universities and certain government organizations tell you is the thing to do. We won't mention Aggies by name, but uh, you know, I've got some good friends that are Agro-Americans, and some of them are kind of American, I guess. I've, uh, uh, I've always been confused by the difference between lava sand, rock phosphate, and rocket fuel. Are they the same thing? No, ma'am. They're three totally different things. Lava sand is ground up lava. High cation exchange capacity, but it brings virtually no minerals and brings no energy. It just loosens the soil and helps to bind things in the soil. Rocket fuel is a fertilizer that Malcolm Beck concocted. Rock phosphate is something I'll talk about a little bit 
greater length. It's just a natural source of phosphates. Yes? I have a raised to your garden uh -huh. with, uh, from Gardenville, and it's very sandy. Okay. Uh, what do I do? Do I till some stuff back into that? Like I just apply a good layer of compost on the surface every season. It's still season. sandy there. Well, you will build organic material, and the soil didn't get poor overnight. It'll take a while to build it. Every year as you get more organic material, it will be better. What you want to avoid is clay. Don't put anything that has clay in it. Some people think we're going to loosen a clay soil by adding sand. Clay plus sand equals concrete. Stay away from the cereal. Sand in many cases worst thing you can put in the soil. But compost, compost, and more compost. If you want to work it in, you can, you'll have a temporary weed problem. But sand in and of itself is not necessarily bad, but it's certainly not as good as organic material. Right here. So what you're saying, when you put the compost on top, just move it aside a little bit and plant your tomatoes. Plant right through it. Yep. Okay, cool. Let's see over here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you said not to till, but I have all these little roots, and I've got a pecan tree nearby, so what do I do there? Get a sharp shovel. <laughs> I mean, that's one of the worst things. Tree roots, they know a good thing when they find it, and you're going to have an increasing problem with tree roots. Uh, you'll have the same thing. We used to keep whiskey barrels around the nursery full of bedding plants. Notice one year it was getting hard to plant in. We used to have a bunch of ash trees that were on the property when we bought it. These blasted ash trees were putting roots up through the holes in the bottom of the whiskey barrels, and the whiskey barrels were solid roots. Just physically break them up, dig them out as best you can. It would be nice to go along the edge of the garden and dig a trench four feet deep and put some sort of barrier down to keep the roots coming in. But if it's close to a pecan tree, you're always going to have that problem. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so once again, the same question. Um, the soil, so just dig a hole, put the... Uh, I'll tell you all about that in just a minute. Yeah. Just put the tomato plant? Yeah. We'll talk all about tomatoes in just a second because I know that's what... Everything in a container. So um, any, you want a soil that is fairly high in organic material and probably something that has some mineral sand in it as well, be it lava sand or vulcanite or things like that. You want to avoid anything that's really high in clay. You want to know if the soil is decent, grab it and try to make a clod out of it. If somebody's selling you soil and you can take it and form it into a hard lump, lousy soil. It should always be loose and crumbly. And well decomposed organic material is the most important thing you'll have in there. Yes, ma'am. He had part of uh, part A of my question. The other question is uh, what uh, vegetables are suitable for a container? If it's a big enough container, anything. But there's no vegetables going to be happy in a pot this big. I mean, if you're going to grow in containers, they ought to be pretty good size. Small containers <laughs> dry out unevenly and they get way too hot because the soil just heats up. Yes, sir. Are you going to talk about? things to make a raised bed out of, or should I ask that now? To actually build up the sides of the bed. My favorite thing is stone. Uh, next in line probably would be concrete blocks or hayite block. Um, I'm not a big opponent of railroad ties. Granted they have creosote, which is a known carcinogen in them. The plants absorb virtually none of that. And by the time CPS is ready to sell you that phone pole or the railroad's ready to sell you that tie, 99% of the stuff in there has, you know, leached out and gone away. I do not like landscape timbers for a couple of different reasons. Number one, they do have some toxic materials in them. But you know what landscape timbers are? You know how plywood's made? They take, a, they take a log and they put it in effect on a spindle and they rotate it around like this, peeling a thin layer of wood off of it, and that's what they use to make plywood. When they get all the way down to the very hard heart of the tree, they can't peel it anymore. So they flatten it out, treat it with chemicals, and call it a landscape timber. Well, that part of the tree absorbs very little chemical to begin with, so they rot out. Anybody tells you landscape timbers last a long time, they don't. They rot. You bring a lot of chemicals in, and I, I just don't care for those. If I were going to go out and buy a wood, I would buy this uh, synthetic wood, the stuff they're making the top of decks out of, which is basically plastic. It only looks like wood. That stuff's great stuff to make a raised bed out of. But my favorite is still rock, you know, still native stone. If I'm going to use the wood, I'm going to go cut down some more cedar trees. I think the only really good cedar tree, except for big old growth trees that are good for wildlife, only good cedar trees, either a fence post or a pile of mulch. And I've created raised beds with cedar trees, but they do rot away too. So, good question. Okay, one more, then I'm going to move on. 
<clears throat> on making your raised bed, uh -huh. uh, would you put the stone or whatever on top of the ground, or would you dig a trench and put it in the air so for more support? I don't think you need the support. You know, that's a nice thing about stone is when you realize you didn't make the garden big enough, you can pick it up and move it back. <laughs> and no garden is big enough. It's like greenhouses. It's when you're deciding how big to make your garden,